Howdy, it's Matt, and in this episode we are going to be taking a look, or rather saying goodbye, to the Finwing Olberbird. Now I just need to put this video into perspective, it was recorded almost a year ago, looking at the dates on here, and my views still stand. There were a few things which I wasn't very happy with the model uh, about, however, uh, it, some of the reasons why I didn't like the model were my fault, and I cover that, cover those reasons in this video. Um, but also getting to the point is that I have genuinely missed a twin, as some of you may have picked up more recently with the, uh, what was it, the DF White Shark, which has been arrived and is actually very similar to the older bird, although infinitely less expensive, uh, especially considering VAT rates, etc. have got really crazy for us in the UK. Uh, and also, I may have been picked up one of those Reptile Dragon version 2s, for sensible money. Um, I think I paid about £85, so not $82 like the DF White Shark, which I'm currently building right now. Uh, but anyway, sorry, the point which I'm trying to make is that this is a goodbye to the Olba Bird. My views today, almost a year on, are still exactly the same. It was an okay model. Josh absolutely loved his, but I'm I'm I gave it to Andy and he smashed it up, so I don't really care. I had no bad feelings about that at all. So take that however you want. Uh, so with that said, uh, this is not the last of twins on this channel because I've got one here on the workbench right now, uh, which is way cheaper than the older bird, and I also have uh, the reptile version two on the way to me as well. It's been ordered; should be here in the next two weeks or so. Fingers crossed. So we will have some more twins on the channel very shortly. Oh, and also some obscure models, which are, um, yeah, I don't want to spoil it for you. Let's talk about the Olber Bird. With that said, let's jump across to the workbench uh, and enjoy. So with that said, myself, Matt, toodles, or just, just go to the bench. Howdy, it's Matt, and it's a sad day because we're gonna be dismantling a model. But I'd also, stress that it's also a good day because it's going to go on to a home where it's going to be loved more than what I currently love it. Also it's a fantastic chance for us to have a good old chit chat at the workbench so I'm going to go and grab the model and I just want to make the point this is no reflection on the model itself it's actually my fault. Uh, and when I say my fault, I tell you what, let me get this cable out of here because otherwise we're going to be rattling around for ages. Yes, this is the Finwing Olber Bird and I am just about to start dismantling this right in front of you. And there's a couple, well, there is actually, there's one reason why I'm going to be doing that and it's entirely my fault. My fault is that I freely admit this now, is that I chose the wrong motor setup for the Finwing Olberbird uh, and this was amplified by Josh flying his uh, and having a, an absolute weight of time. Literally Josh's Olberbird will fly vertical, literally straight up and he, in fact he was prop hanging it on Sunday as well just to add insult to injury. Uh, his model does, <laughs> yeah it really does fly fantastically well and I'm just a little bit disappointed about that because mine doesn't uh, and it's nobody's fault other than my own because I thought I was going to be a smart boy and stick uh, what should we call it some sunny sky x2212s no uh, yeah x2212s 980 kV I thought that was going to be more than enough uh, power for this model and I tried 7 by 4 fives first and they didn't have enough fro uh, throttle in them uh, and then oh, have I stuck that in there uh, and then I tried some 8 by 6s and those really did not have enough thrust either uh, so uh, ironically I've now got 8 by 8s on there and I still don't have enough thrust super efficient I hasten to add but it, the model just it's not as good as what I've seen with with Josh's and that that's the thing I've, I've unfortunately seen a better one and I don't wanna the other brutal reality is that I just don't want to spend another 40 quid on it I I'm, that, that is my reasoning I just don't want to spend another 40 pounds into the model there's no there, there is very little bad which I can say about this model there is very few things bad about it 
the, the only negative I, well actually there's two things, one the foam wasn't as dense as what I would have perhaps hoped, although I've kind of got over that now, uh, and one thing which I would do if I was keeping this longer term is that I would get some spare foam uh, and I would create a bridge in here, I would fill this, join this side of the wing, uh, that side of the fuselage to that side of the fuselage because I have noticed it on mine and I've also, uh, and Josh noticed it on his, uh, is that these two sections do seem to pull themselves apart and uh, something glued in here would definitely uh, make that, will stop that from happening and also extremely simple to do as well. We're just talking about a bit of foam and a bit of hot glue uh, and the job would be a good one. Now the setup which I went for this model was a pretty good setup, ignoring the motors, like I said, completely my fault when it comes to the motors, uh, was a good setup and I've got a Matek F722 standard flight controller and they're not the most ideal flight controller uh, for this model, a F765 or the smaller one or a 405 wing board uh, would have been a, a, an equally very good choice as well. Uh, I'm just getting in there and unhook, unhooking the elastic bands which I'm using to hold uh, the, the flight controller in place and you may also notice some plastic clips in fact let me just zoom in and show you that's what I'm in there doing is that I've got these plastic cable clips uh, I think I bought, well I, I think I originally I said I bought them on Screwfix but I actually bought them on eBay uh, of all things and they're just some sticky back foam clips uh, and you'll see that I've stuck them in here and I was able to separate out uh, all the, the cables and keep the wiring very, very neat in here as well. Uh, and that did work out ridiculously well. Um, there is a bit of a wiring mess here uh, because I do have a freeway camera switcher uh, in the back because you may have noticed me starting off by undoing the FPV camera on the tail, which did work remarkably well. I was quite impressed with that. Uh, that did work very, very well indeed. I, I loved that view from behind. Uh, and looking down and the, the, the 3D print which uh, Finwing provide you with was really big and cumbersome and all I literally did was just stick a, uh, oh I've got some here, oh, another one, no it's just tucked in there, uh, oh that's the camera feed going out for that one, uh, all, all I literally did was it embedded a servo in there and that just worked out perfectly uh, and yeah like I said it did work out really well but I'm just not prepared to spend the, the 40 odd quid and then wait another two weeks or more for the motors to turn up uh, for a model which, yeah, sometimes I, I it, it, it flies great but sometimes I just don't click with a model. I'm sure many of you which have had multiple models will appreciate that. Uh, and there was actually, we had a really good fun conversation on Sunday actually, which was the, like, what is your favourite model? And Josh came back with the right answer, and I think he was absolutely spot on, which is that the best model, your favourite model, is the one which you're flying at at that time. Uh, and I think he hit the nail on the head because that's exactly the case with me most of the time. My favourite model is the one, or can be, the one which I'm flying there and then. Although because of the amount of models which I do get through over the course of a year. I do tend to have favourites. My favourite one at the moment uh, is got, got to be, and it's by a country model. As much as the Drift is a fantastic model, uh, the, my favourite is the Dark 250G. Now the reason why the Dark 250G is my favourite, and I'm quite happy to explain this, uh, is because it's so small, it's so light, the second you chuck it, nobody sees it, and the second you chuck it, nobody hears it. It is an extremely covert vehicle, uh, to say the least. And again, God forbid, if, if it was to hit anything in the sky or, uh, or land into anything, then you, the other the model's going to come off worse. There is no, unlike an Olberbird, for example, which is a relatively large model. What am I going to add? Ah, I've gone on there. Uh, that would, this thing would definitely, you'd have to agree with me, make a dent in whatever you landed in uh, just by the sheer size of it. Uh, and that's obviously not a good thing. Whereas the Dart 250, you, it, it, what, <laughs> the model would definitely, definitely come off worse. There's no two ways about that. Uh, just because of the, have I hot glued that on there? Yeah, I have. Oh, that's going to be fun getting that off. Um, so yeah, 
Talking of favourites and not favourites and stuff, yeah, the Dart 250G is definitely my favourite at the moment. Uh, I do like that model an awful lot. The I also got the the AR600 out as well for some FPV fun. The Spec Wing I've also been enjoying too. I've not flown the Nano Talon in quite a while. I feel a bit bad because that was definitely the favourite model of mine for a very long time. Uh, for again, for exactly the same reasons which we were just discussing. It is a very small model and again if it was to ever land in anything or anyone it's not very big and just wouldn't do much damage at all and I like that uh, for, for many different reasons as some of you can probably guess what those might be. So coming back to the older bird, it was very straightforward to build. A little bit of a toe to laminate in a few places if I'm honest. This, this fuselage was a bit of a uh, good fun, should we, shall we say, uh, to get laminated. Uh, and that, that was just because of the size of it. I didn't like the join method between the rear of the fuse, the rear of the tail to the main bit. So there is actually, ironically, a lot of hot glue holding that together. Uh, and Andy, well, I don't think that's going to come off anytime soon. Uh, so Andy will have fun if he ever tries to get that out, because <laughs> that's not going to happen uh, overnight. Also, up on the nose of the model, I did go with a Runcam 4K. Again, I'm gonna, I love the pan and tilt, which I set up for this. A massive thank you to Keith Lanou for creating that. That did work out fantastically well. Uh, and it was really nice panning side to side and looking at the, uh, the, the motors spinning around. I think that was a fantastic view. And again, combine that with the tail camera as well. That was really, really cool. But again, the reality is, is that is a hundred pounds worth or thereabouts. Uh, you can't really see it very well. That is the best part of 100 quid on there. It's right on the front of a model, and I don't think it's. And the memory card's hanging out the side. That's uh, something which I didn't do with the the holder. And yeah, from a practical point of view, that's a lot of money stuck on the front of the camera when uh, front of the model when a uh, perhaps a run cam to 4K would have been perhaps a better idea because you can at least take that off and put it on a different model and not just have that all that money tied up in a single model combined with the less than perfect servos in there. So that's gonna take me a minute or two to get that off properly. So I'm gonna put that to one side. But I am gonna get back here in the front and start pulling some cables out. And we're also gonna have the wings off as well. Now to give you a heads up, it's not getting binned. I'm not throwing it away. I'm not disposing of the model at all. Uh, it's actually going to one of our friends, Andy, uh, from the Funny Farm. So I'm sure it will find and I'm sure it, A, it's gonna find a new home, and B, I'm sure that the home which it's going to is that it's gonna be thoroughly enjoyed at. Okay, I think that's, so while this is a sad video, and I don't want this to be a reflection upon the model or Finwing itself, I'm trying to make, I'm, the reason why I'm making this video is to make the point is that, unfortunately, me and this model has not, not clicked, uh, and I have now drawn the line that I'm not gonna spend that extra money on it to change the motors in there. Uh, it's just it's 40 quid, another fortnight, and and yeah, I, I've basically had enough. So that's what I'm sticking with. Sometimes I've got to make tough choices about models. I, I know some people just literally, because of the number of models you get through uh, on just by the nature of what we're doing, is that sometimes some models need to go out the door for one or other reasons and this one has been a really nice model it's just and it's a shame that it's going but I'd like I said I'm just not prepared to spend that extra amount of money to get it to where perhaps I should have got it in the first place now I, I do want to stress that's the issue why I didn't go with their stock motors uh, and ESCs was for two reasons one is because I knew that there was an issue with them getting rejected by customs originally, uh, and that was an issue that Finwing were having. Uh, and the other reason is because I thought I knew better and went for the Sunny Skies instead. And obviously this has now just been proven that perhaps in this instance, I really did not do better at all. Uh, and uh, the model is now paying for my mistake. Better screwdriver. But on the bright side, it does mean that we can have a chit chat. Here it is. That's the worst screwdriver. <laughs> that does mean that we can have an old chit chat about models and foam, etc., etc. Here at the workbench. The one thing which I really did like about this model uh, is that it, a, it did fly 
pretty well, to say the least. That screwdriver is awful. Um, and especially compared to that binary model which we had, that was absolutely awful. The binary was only ever designed to fly literally in a straight line uh, and to go out and patrol and then come back. I think that's quite obvious by its uh, design and also by numerous other sources as well. Whereas this one, you're, you're a, you are able to muck around with it, you are able to do stuff with it too. And also the motor mounts on this were absolutely fantastic. They were very, very well made uh, and uh, were infinitely superior compared to the uh, binary as well. So yeah, out of the two models, this was leaps and bangs superior compared to the Sonic model binary. I don't think we'll ever see a version 2 of the binary, which I think is a bit sad. Uh, it could definitely do with some tweaks, for sure. Uh, those of you which know about that, definitely a different wing would make a massive difference. Uh, and a couple of other minor tweaks, but uh, yeah. Oh, and the other one is that I did find it... What was going to... Yeah. Yeah, you, you have to pack, what is it, the, the point which I'm trying to make is that you do have to pack, or did have to pack, quite a lot of weight in the nose of the old bird to get it to fly. Because if you think where the CG is here, there's not, that tail area is absolutely mahoosive. Uh, and that does cause you one or two issues around about the CG. Even sticking that massive 10,000 milliamp for your battery pack is that I'm up here somewhere, somewhere with it as well. Now I know that is motor Pacific and set up Pacific. But uh, yeah, that was a bit of a challenge. Uh, getting into here, again, I do like the layout which I went with for the model itself. The crossfire on one wing and the video transmitter on the other. That does make, or did make complete sense to me. And I am pe pe picking this out because I know Andy will go on and stick uh, Dragon Link into his. Oh, look. Only use sellotape. So, I'm not sure Andy was fixed the uh, laminate for his. Uh, very shortly, so I'm just going to, oh look, that whole piece of lamb that's coming off in one go, that made, just made things an awful lot easier. Uh, yeah, big tip for you, when you're putting the trunk in, in for your uh, receiver or video transmitter, is that when you first laminate it, is that if you laminate it with, and then cut the trenches in, and then put another piece of laminate in over the top of it, uh, it does mean that you can get your receivers or video transmitters in and out extremely easily. Uh, and I will leave the pins on there. Oh, the one thing, nice thing about this model for sure was definitely the CG was correct. Uh, we have had models here before where the CG has definitely not been correct. Uh, and that's been in run us into a couple of issues or some fun, <laughs> as some might say. Uh, that has, yeah, that definitely has caused fun. Yeah, but all in all, not, not a bad model, I'm just, yeah, I've, I've been mulling over the decision for a, about two weeks now, if I'm honest, and I'm only just finally getting to it now, uh, and thinking to myself, yeah, I, I, I just don't want to spend the extra money on it, and I'm, yeah, yeah, you sometimes, some models you just click with, and some models you don't. Anyway, getting into some other topics, we've had a bit of fun with the, um, certain character which turned up recently saying indicating that some models are only for real FPV pilots that was quite funny wasn't it I did get bemused by that a lot um, and I'm not apologizing for making several videos about that but it did because it just made me laugh every video I made for it was I was here in the background giggling to myself because uh, I did find it very funny as in that uh, I did find it very funny that somebody could be so naive if that makes sense and I do feel sorry for the guy uh, definitely in more than one way again many of you have given him a load of grief which uh, one should not encourage although it has frankly been absolutely hilarious because the bloke has been an absolute tool and I think we've all seen that as well and maybe I think Bruce put a message, uh, comment in, one, in that one of the videos as well saying that some people do just have a straight underlying requirement to not even just blatant uh, profiteering is the word which we're after um, at least I do feel 
good in some ways. At least here we're able to. I I always took and and now blatantly will continue to take it. It doesn't matter if I've got a model for free or not. I think I've proven to you. Uh, I will show the good and the bad with a model, but. It, not all models are good. There's some models do require a little tweak here and there to, to get it to your own personal tastes or as in the case of the LTE Rambler for it to bloody fly in a straight line because it would not. That fin made just adding a tiny bit of depth on to that fin that's all it took and it made a massive difference to the flight characteristics of that model literally night and day one of them it was wandering all over the whole hunting all over hunting all the way all the way over the sky uh, and on the next one it was absolutely peachy and i know it was a super calm day for the for the next flight but even still the other day wasn't particularly that windy and it was definitely misbehaving so yeah bit of fun with that to say the least uh, we now have a couple of new facebook groups for that i'm sure that cheered them up but hey ho, it's their loss, our gain, uh, from the, the censorship which was going on. I, that was not, that's not how I do things, and I'm pretty sure I know that that's not how you would do things either. Um, obviously, the, you, many of you know that I've come back a, a second time around, and I'm very open and honest that some models now, uh, with a change of tax, uh, will turn up and they will be free. And in most instances, is that I have asked Banggood specifically for them. I think that's also a key point here, is that the Rambler, I was very curious on that model, and I am going to intend to keep it around for a while, not only just to annoy the alley chap, but on a serious point, it's not a bad model at all. It's, it's not bad. It's not worthy of being abused as it is. Perhaps the company behind it is not the best, uh, as very clearly demonstrated several times. But the model, remember, we're, we're oh, by the way, I, I do use, uh, on the video transmitters, I do use uh, heat transfer compound. That's what that gray stuff was underneath there, uh, just to help transfer the heat again, especially because that was on the underside. And some of you smart people may have noticed that uh, the fin was the wrong way around. It should, the fin should be that way around to get more airflow over the top. I'm sure somebody will mention that in the comments. I knew about that. That's why I used thermal compound and a much larger video, uh, and much larger heat sink to perhaps what I normally would have done, uh, if that makes sense, because I know somebody will pick me, up on, pick me up on that in a moment. So let's get those wings out of the way. Oh, a big tip for the uh, Albert owners out there is, include an Allen key in the fuselage. And the reason why you include, I'll take that out because I'm sure Andy's got his own. Uh, the reason why you include the Allen key in there is I've completely forgotten. Something needs the Allen keys. Was it that supposed to, ooh. Is that to use to hold the wings on? There's, there's, a, there's a requirement on this model somewhere for Allen keys and uh, a very simple way of dealing with that is to actually stick an Allen key, a spare one, because I'm sure we've all got duplicates, stick that in the foam in the model and then you always know that you've got one spare. So that's what I went on and did. So I'm just here trying to pop off this. Yeah, I've definitely used hot glue for the holding on the GPS module. And it was quite a nice idea for the GPS module. It, as, as sceptical as I was, come on, uh, its placement up there did work because it was a bit weird because you had this funny hole in here, like so. But it did work out fine as long as you taped in the bottom of it. So, hey ho, let's just get some of these, some of these cables out. Uh, I think I'll leave Andy the holder on the top. He's going to have a couple of extension leads for the back. Uh, I'll leave the flight controller holder in there as well. Uh, you can pack, or could pack, an absolute ton of battery in this model for sure. Very, very, very easily. That could, yeah, you've seen the size of it. It's not small by any stretch of the imagination. So anyway, let me just go and put this back on there. Again, a very simple mod. Uh, just a bit of folded back tape on there so that you're able to get into that rear hatch uh, easily. Uh, I do need to go on now and take apart this nose section. I don't think that's going to be a a five minute job. I'm just gonna be saying that and I'm here running the knife down the side of it to see if that will do it. Yeah, knife and the screwdriver I think is gonna get this off. I can't remember how much hot glue I used to stick it in there. <laughs> Probably too much knowing Matt. Um, I'm not, nor I don't normally hold back 
on the old hot glue. What I am being very wary of is that I don't want to stab myself in the eye with the knife which I've knife blade which I've been bent or broke because I've had, believe it or not, I've had a few of these blades snap and go off in my face. And I have been extremely lucky and I'd like to continue with that luck by not being a complete nose uh, and using a knife to try and prise this out of here. So yeah the run cam 4K which was on the nose once I cleaned, once I cleaned up the lenses on it, because I put a load of Rain-X on them, uh, that did work really, really well. Uh, and I, I am, I am impressed with the video quality. It's typical run cam video quality, which was very, very good. But the problem is, is that it, it's a HD video feed stuck on one model and one model only and I think I'm ripping the base off here which I'm trying not to break the model because like I said it's going to most likely go on to Andy for, for him to abuse although I need to go and give him the good news in a minute because he was hinting at it at the weekend because I'd mentioned to the lads that I was thinking of getting rid of it uh, and he was hinting at it would be a nice home for him to, for, for it to go to him uh, which is fair enough he's had quite a few models from me and I have no issues with that at all along as long as they go on and get loved, that's happy days. We are definitely not intending to stick rockets in it. Does that make sense? Anyway, uh, I'm going to carry on and struggle uh, getting that off in a... I think I need to dismantle it properly, in short, uh, and work my way down, because it is quite well. It was. It took a while to get this thing to, to put it together, and I think I need to spend about the same amount of time to get back in there. Um, yeah, in summary... The Olber Bird. I like the model. Keep that in the back of your mind. I don't want this video to be a negative towards the Olber Bird. It is a country, like, it is a mahoosive country more better than the other twin alternatives which are out there. It does fly really nicely. Twin motor models always sound fantastic. Uh, it's just unfortunate that, that in this instance, I've drawn the line. I don't want to spend any more money on it. I'm sure some of you will appreciate that, I'm sure some of you won't appreciate that, but I, I just don't want to spend another 40 quid on two motors and whatever else, it's just, and however long it takes to get here, because it's not only the case that I then need to fit the models, then you, uh, you don't have to solder them up, and it might as well go to somewhere where it's going to be loved. I hope that makes sense. And of course we had a bit of a chit chat here at the workbench as well. We've not had a bloody good chit chat at the workbench in ages. Where am I going to get in here? Uh, wire nippers. So I'd like to say a massive thank you to, for you joining me here at the workbench for a good old chit chat. Uh, and yeah, wish it could have been on perhaps a more cheerier topic. But this is real life, you know. Some, some models hanging around for forever and some don't and that's just the way it is and I think that's the way it will always be and we have had model, um, sorry we do have models here which will which will and forevermore will hang around forever because they are just unique in their own very special ways uh, however there are models which come and go over time as I'm sure friends and family do as, a, as, a, as an interesting co co um, comparison, isn't it? Using referring to models as friends and family, or friends that come over time. Um, but you, you, you kind of, you know what I mean. You, like as Josh was saying, that my fa his most favourite plane is the one which he's got in the sky right now, and I, I, I can appreciate that opinion. Um, I do think about my models when I'm not flying them, uh, and I do, I definitely do have favourites, and I have no shame in sharing which ones are my favourites, as I'm sure that you appreciate at times and sometimes don't appreciate in other instances as, as well. But uh, yeah, in all seriousness, is that we are very much spoiled. I don't want to break this survey. Uh, we are very much spoiled for choice when it comes to, to RC models. Uh, and yeah. Ooh, Do you think that survey is going to break? Or is, Have I broken it? I've cracked it, but that's come out brilliant. So it means I can get down to uh, these. Yay. Oh, it's, oh, I did spoil myself the other day. It was my birthday a couple of weeks back. Uh, um, from Hobby RC, I bought some Team Black Sheep. Black, black Sheep. Spit me words out. Allen keys, or. Yeah, 
And they're really good, I really like those. It's the first time I've had some decent set and they have worked out really, really well. I've been quite impressed with those. Uh, normally tools here don't last five minutes unless I've paid really good money for them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a little bit more reverent with them. I think that's the general story for most things, isn't it? The things which you pay a lot of money for, you tend to look after for. But if you bought cheap, you kind of know that they're cheap and you're not that bothered about ruining them. Um, I'm thinking about those little wire nippers there, which I've bought, the mi those micro ones. Those were really expensive. Uh, and I bought a long nose part set off Amazon. I bought the, they were eight or nine quid, I think, something like that, those were. And they were not cheap. Uh, and ever since I've had them, I have genuinely looked after them. Uh, and then when something has needed to be nipped, which I think it might damage them, uh, I use a different set and I keep those as my best ones. Uh, and they've lasted uh, a good two years or so, so far. So that has been happy days when it comes to them. Uh, and these have been an absolute toad. Yeah, the other... Do you say this is a negative or a positive? I, I, I don't know. The, the, the Runcam 4K is... I am struggling with this. I'm going to be toolbox. Let me grab that uh, I, I would... It's an interesting one. It, it, it is very much an interesting one because you just don't... Oh, I don't say I haven't got a small enough one. Pants. Uh, is that it's... As fragile as it is, and I'm being trying to be careful as possible with it, uh, is that it's also as light as it is. And we were chatting about this on Messenger earlier. Maybe if you wanted lightweight, etc., etc., breaking up, taking, decasing a run cam to for again, assuming that you wanted the 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 4K side, is that may I'm going to lose mine. Just going to chop these off. Uh, maybe. Decasing a that was not the best idea. Um, decasing the Runcam 2 4K might have been a better idea as compared to using one of these. And I'm I'm struggling now. i what do I need to do? I'm okay, again. I'm being really super careful with it because it's a a very expensive component in the scheme of things. Isn't it? Ah, that's, being careful but brilliant right that's out need to get the cables out the bottom of here now because somebody also hot glued them in there as well to never come out well done Matt absolutely well done I think I might just cut this out with the knife I'm sure Andy will put more hot glue in there than what I used originally and also he appreciates that it's a second hand model he knows that Matt's had it and worked on it and in some ways I've also helped him out by getting all the wiring in place so that he can literally just come straight in, ah there we go, uh, come in and fit in his components which makes sense to him and normally his components are not far off my components uh, and it should be a direct fit for him. So I'll keep the servos in the model, I'm not pillaging those, I've got plenty here. Uh, and I did use those nice Raystar servos in mine as well, those did work out really well, they were really quite nice to fly with. Although I did have a dodgy one the other day, but I think that's because I landed the model. Oh, that was the Rambler RS of all things. <laughs> yeah, the Duff servo in it, and I had to change that halfway through the day, but uh, it did end up in a hedge, so... You've got to be fair where fair needs to be made. Um, if you've stuffed something in a bush and it breaks, then you shouldn't be surprised, really, should you? Right. Yeah, all that money for that, that's quite a lot of money which then gets tied up into a single model that's another thing which was to be honest bugging me about this model was that I had so much invested in it because the the run cam kit which I'm going to go very careful and pop that over there uh, was also very expensive too so what we got left in here got a pan servo left brilliant pop that one out need to get my servo out oh that's going to be fun because that's going to be oh no that's not going to be fun yeah, I've just put a ton of hot glue in there to hold that into place. I think what I'm going to do is shock horror wherever the blue torch is. Um, here. Again, one of the nice, you could use um, alcohol to do it, but all I'm going to do is heat up the 
craft knife and then just cut the servo out using the heat because it's hot glue isn't it so really cut in there and I'll do the other side as well like so just get down the other side and we'll be able to pop it out yeah yeah, hot glue, do like it, can be a bit of a pain. Oh, you may have noticed the marks on my hand. Uh, that was from the hot glue gun. The white, we were here working on the Micro Sky Hunters. Uh, Sonic Model sent me three Micro Sky Hunters to, for us to do a race with, which was absolute carnage. And uh, anyway, point being, <laughs> is that the wife managed to stick hot glue on my arm uh, and has literally scarred me and I'm still recovering from that at the moment. It's gonna take several weeks for those to go, I think. And there we go, that works a treat. Put the servo out. Again, those are expensive to say the least. I will put the bits which I've taken out, or some of the bits which I've taken out, like all this, well, of course, all the screws and stuff, uh, and these back plates. I'll put these in a the little bag and give them to Andy. So, with that said, look out for the Olber Bird uh, in Andy's videos. I'll put a link to. Uh, Andrew's YouTube channel in the video description. Look out for the videos from him uh, in the near future. I'm sure he'll go on and love the plane. For me, right now, I'm just saying I didn't want to spend the other 40 quid for it, and it was just as easy for me to dismantle it as it was to spend the 40 pounds on it. Please do not take that as a reflection on the model. I think I've said that a couple of times. So it's not meant to be a negative. In fact, in many ways, I, I just wanted to for me to be able to say goodbye, Olber Bird. We definitely did have some fun and you are gonna go on and go to a home where someone is genuinely gonna go on and enjoy you. So with that said, any questions or comments about the Olber Bird or anything else which we've been discussed here at the workbench, let me know in the comments section. And then if this video I have, got to be honest, I've enjoyed our chit chat. And I know it's just me chatting to you, but I'm glad that you're here. Thank you, in short. And on that note for myself, Matt, cheerios. <laughs>